morning. Welcome to Pre-Algebra. Today we're going to do a little bit of a review. I've had several of you pop in questions, which I appreciate very much. It's going to help me help you do well. So I want you to take your book and turn back to lesson 111. I had several of you ask me about simple and compound interest. So we're going to go over that a little bit more. First, we need to remember how we find interest. Interest is a simple formula. If you remember, Mrs. Turner told you the word they use in your book is amount. Okay, they use the words rate times the amount equals the interest. Now, I told you that the word amount really is called the principle. Okay, it's called the principal. The principal is the amount of money you're placing into the bank, okay, that they're gonna pay you interest on. The rate is the percentage they are going to pay you. So let's look over at a problem. Let's look at our problem set. And we didn't do all of these, so um, I'm trying to find one real quickly. Okay, look at number five. I don't know if we did this one or not. Akeem put $15,000 in the bank. So that's his what? Is that his rate or his amount or his interest? That's his amount, okay? So he put in $15,000, okay? That's his amount, that's the amount he put in. Let's look at it again, it says, he put it in the bank at 10% simple interest. That means they're gonna pay him what rate? 10%. Now. I know that I cannot multiply by 10%. I can't multiply by a percent, so what do I have to do? Change that to a decimal. What's the decimal? Well, 0.1, it's technically 0 0.10, but I don't need that zero, right? To go from a percent to a decimal, you drop the percent sign and move your decimal point two places. So I have 0.1 times 15,000. Okay, when I multiply that out, I'm going to get 15,000, because one times 15,000 is 15,000, but I have to move my decimal point how many places? One time. It's here, so I'm gonna move it over. So I'm gonna just mark that off. I can mark it off and put another one there. So how much did he earn? $1,500, or $1,500. Now, that is what we call simple interest. He's paid that money one time, it's his money, it's all it is, okay? So how much money does he have now? Well. You would say he has the 15,000 that he put in plus the 1,500 that he earned in interest. I'm simply gonna add these together. He's gonna have $16,500, okay? Now, look at your next uh, problem. It says, how much would Akeem's $15,000 be worth in three years? if it had been deposited at 10% compounded annually. Okay, now, there's a couple of different ways we can solve this problem, okay? But for compounded interest, what we're gonna do, we know that at the end of the first year, how much money does Akeem have? $16,500, right? He put $15,000 in at 10% interest, and at the end of the year, they gave him $1,500. Now, that's his money. But now we wanna say, no, let's compound it annually. It means once a year, they're gonna give him his interest. But when they give it to you, they just roll it into your account. So how much money does he have in the bank now? He has $16,500. Now, this is year one, okay? Since we're gonna compound it, we're gonna take this new amount of $16,500 $500, we're gonna multiply it by our rate, which is still 10% or 0.1. Now, how much interest will he make the second year? The second year, he's gonna make $1,650, okay? So now to find out his amount of money at the end of the second year, we have to add his new interest to his the principal that he started the second year with. This is what he started the first year with. This is the money he earned the first year. 
Give him a total at the end of the first year, he had 16,500. So the second year he started with the 16,500 and they paid him 10% and he made $1,650. So how much money does he have now? Well, when we add it together, he's gonna have, um, he has one, it's not one. Now he has $18,150. But they said that he's going to compound it for three years. This is the end of year two. What happens year three? Take the amount of money he put in the bank at the beginning of year three, multiply it by his rate of 0.1. How much did he earn? He earned $1,815. Now what do I do? Take the amount of his interest, add it to the principal, so now we have, okay, whoop, this is turning around our numbers off, sorry about that guys, I'm just right over here, so I have five, six, seven, nine, one. Okay, so now in three years, he earns $19,765, okay? So the difference between simple and compound, simple interest was what he got one year, this is the amount of money he earned. This is his total amount. He walks away. Compounded interest says take that money, put it back in the bank account, and calculate the interest again for a second year and see how much more. And then the third year, fourth year, fifth year, however long you leave it in the bank, okay? This is interest. How do you calculate interest? The rate times the amount. The fancy word for the amount is principal equals the interest. So rate times principal equals interest. Okay, let's review just a minute. If I have two angles that share a vertex, okay, I'm gonna write this out so you can see it. I have two angles that share a vertex. A vertex is a beginning point. Okay, so I have two angles, that's two rays. Now I have two angles. They share a vertex and they share a side. What are they called? They're called adjacent angles. If I have an angle that is less than 90 degrees, that angle is called acute. If I have an angle that is exactly 90 degrees, it will form a corner. It's called a right angle. In geometry, Whenever you have a right angle, I can tell because remember I told you they're gonna make that little square in the bottom. That means it's exactly 90 degrees. If an angle is more than 90 degrees, what is it called? It's called obtuse. If it's exactly 180 degrees, it is called a straight angle. Now on your worksheet, you saw reflex angles and we didn't really get into them. For our purposes, we're gonna say that obtuse and reflex are the same. They're not exactly, but they're really close and Ms. Arguetta will teach you about that later, okay? So whenever you get on your worksheets, if you saw reflex and obtuse and both are options, just mark the reflex out and use the word obtuse as a choice, okay? All triangles, no matter how large or how small, when you add the angles together, what do the angles equal? All angles, e uh, all the angles of a triangle will equal 180 degrees. Okay, when you have two angles, and uh, let's see, let's see that the two angles that you're looking at equal 90 degrees. They equal 90 degrees. We would say that those two angles are complementary. If two angles that are you're looking at equal 180 degrees, they are supplementary. Now, if I give you a triangle and I give you the and I give you the measurements of two angles. Let's say I give you angle here and this angle. These are not correct, okay? But let's say that this one is 35 and this one is 60. What is that angle? How are you going to know? Well, you're going to take 60 plus 35, 
and you're gonna get 95, correct? Now take the 90, say 180 minus 95, and that gives you your answer for the missing angle of a triangle. I told you that there were several different kinds of triangles. Triangles that have the same measurement on every side is called an equilateral triangle. If two sides are the same, it is called a scalene triangle. If none of the sides are the same, we call it a isosceles. Then there's one that has an angle that measures 90 degrees. That is called a right triangle. Okay, today is all about reviewing, making sure you understand what you're doing. Uh, there is no homework online today. All I want you to do, if you have any questions about what you think uh, I need to let you know uh, before we take our test, I want you to text those to me. That's the only thing I need from you today is type in. Uh, I will give you a place online. You can type those in or you can text them to me. I just want to make sure you feel comfortable going into your last couple of tests before the quarter ends, okay? All right, guys, I miss you. Have a great day.